about 83 percent of you guys are not subscribed subscribing clicking that like button and commenting all help me out a lot in doing what i really want to do thank you guys so much for all your support what is going on guys rogue tcg here bringing another Yu-Gi-Oh tcg deck profile you all voted for it and here i am responding here is one of my favorite decks here is my updated orcus build now, I've specifically built this deck to play optimally against Snake Eye Fiendsmith specifically, and ideally it should be able to take off games against that deck. That is the be absolute best deck in the room right now, so it still is going to be losing to that deck more likely than not, but I have tried to design the deck around mm -hmm. graveyard hate and um, synergistic little things that can help stop the Fiendsmith strategy. So, that's enough the happen for me. Let's show you the list. Starting off with our main deck. In our main deck, we are playing main deck Orcus. We are on triple Gearsu, the Orcus Mech Knight. On normal or special summon, this guy is going to be dumping an Orcus or a World Legacy from deck to graveyard. And on ignition, if he's the only monster on field that we control, we can make a token both for ourselves and for our opponents. He can also become a tuner, but that's not especially too relevant in this version of the deck. But this card is very strong because this is our main normal summon in order to dump our cards. Next, we are on Triple Orchest Harp Horror. This card in Graveyard allows us to banish it from Graveyard to special summon an Orchest from deck except for itself. More likely than not, we are going to be special summoning a Gearsu the Orcus Mech Knight off of it. However, if we've already used Gearsu in the turn, we can summon something else like a Nightmare or a Symbol Skeleton. Speaking of, we are on two copies of Orcus Nightmare. When it's in the graveyard, we can banish it to target a face-up card on the field. That card is going to gain attack equal to the level of a monster we're going to be sending from our deck to the graveyard that's a Dark Machine times 100. So if it's a level 10, it's going to gain a thousand attack, so on and so forth. So Nightmare is just a way to dump our Dark Machines to the graveyard and get us a little bit of a bonus for it. And then we are on two Orcus Symbol Skeleton. When it's in the graveyard, we can banish it from the graveyard to target a different Orcus other than itself and special summon it to our field. Um, I forgot to mention, all of our Orcus the graveyard effects are all going to lock us into only summoning dark monsters for us of the turn. So you do must uh, you do got to keep that in mind for uh, combos. But Symbol Skeleton is really good for being able to bring back interaction for our opponents. And then we are on two more Orcus. We're on one World Legacy World Wand, our honorary Orcus, and one Orcus Brass Bombard. World Wand is able to special summon Banish Orcus if it's in the graveyard, and then Brass Bombard if it's in the graveyard lets us summon Orcus out of our hand. Both of us, both of them are still going to be dark locking us though. And then we are on Orcus Spell Traps. We're on one Orchestrated Babble, one Orchestrated Return, and then one Orchestrated Crescendo. These cards are really good. Babble is going to make all of our Orcus quick effects, so this is the main thing we want to be ending on. Crescendo is just a counter trap, but it's really good if you think your opponent is on evenly matched or a Dark Ruler No More or something like that. It's just a really good counter check for that. And then Return is a card that allows us to pitch an Orcus or a World Legacy card to draw two cards. Just a really good way to get your Orcus and the World Want into Graveyard while also getting card advantage. That's it for our Orcus, now onto our supplementary engine. We are still on the Cartesia engine, I just do think it is quite strong being able to load up our Orcus in Graveyard every step of the way, and even if they interact with it, our Orcus are still in Graveyard. They're still there, They're still threatening. But we are on Triple Blazing Cartesia the Virtuous. The main reason this is in our deck is because we can use this in a lighter or dark monster to fusion summon 
into uh, Ronginyol, the Dusk Dragon. Um, so once we are able to summon that, Ronginyol is allow does allow us to send an Orcus Nightmare from deck to graveyard because it does fulfill the specific requirements on that card. So. Artesia is really good, as well as being able to add itself back to hand as the turn of Fusion Monster was sent to the graveyard. If it was in the graveyard, it's really nice, because when we link off our Grand Guignol, we are able to add it back to our hand. In order to get our Cartesia, we are playing Branded in High Spirits. Every single machine and spellcaster in our deck is a way to get to Branded in High Spirits. Uh, I know you might be thinking we are just playing the Cartesia as our spellcaster, but we are do we are also playing other spellcasters as well. So this is just a really good way to get to our Cartesia as well as fueling our graveyard along the way. I have chosen to reintroduce Bestials into the main deck of this deck. Uh, this is really, really good against Fiendsmith. So we are playing one Lubellion, one Magnum, and one Druid Worm, and then the Honorary um, Bestial, one Fantastical Dragon Phantasmic, just so we have a non-Bestial search target off of Magnumut, and this is just a good hand trap in my opinion. We are also playing one Branded Regained to go with our Bestial Lubellion. Branded Regain that lets us stay in the game almost indefinitely as long as it stays on field, and if we have a Bestial in Graveyard, it really heavily punishes our opponent for just playing the game. But that's it for our like engines of sorts. Now let's get into our non-engine. For our power cards, I'm on one link into the Varanes. Sometimes our hands are just very bricky, and this is a card that can help unbrick them, but we do not want to be seeing this card like frequently at all. Uh, so this is just a cute little like one of tech card that I did want to put into the list to just try out. As well as this isn't a cute little tech card really, but here's just a foolish burial. Um we're a graveyard deck, we like stuff in the graveyard, especially hardcore. This is a way to get it into there. We are on double Forbidden Droplet in the main. Um, again, all of our stuff likes being in the graveyard. Droplet fulfills that requirement, so we will be playing Droplet. And then um, the main thing with Cartesia is it can get impermed and effect veilered. So we are playing triple Book of Moon to try to mitigate that as much as we possibly can. But that's it for our non-engine spells. Let us talk about our hand traps other than bestials, of course. On our For our hand trap lineup, we are on a triple infinite impermanence. We are on triple of the light spellcaster effect veiler, which does allow us to either fuse into Cartesia or search Cartesia. And then we are on Triple Droll and Lockbird, which is a spellcaster so we can search Cartesia, but unfortunately we cannot fuse with it. But the main benefit is a lot of decks do kind of fold Droll, especially um, decks kind of like you bow, that sort of thing. Or, I guess. Thing is, a lot of decks kind of fold to Droll, and our deck is not one of them, so playing Droll just kind of seems like a no-brainer in my opinion, to be honest. But that's about it for the uh, main deck. Now let's cover our extra deck. In our extra deck, we are on one Salomon Great Al Mirage. This is namely here for Brass, Bombard, and for Hand Traps to get them into the graveyard. Namely Valor, which is good for the Bestials. And this is a way to get Brass Bombard off the field so we can do Brass Bombard plays now that Link Karibo is banned. So this is just our replacement for Link Karibo. It's not as good as Link Karibo, of course, but that's what we can do. We are on the Blowdrop Brothers, IP Masquerina and SP Little Knight. They're canonically gay. They're kind of like, you kind of have to play it in the deck, unfortunately, but they are incredibly strong in this deck because of Dingirsu. We are on one Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. I just think this card is very, very strong, so I've been liking it a lot and I will continue to be playing it. We are, of course, on Double Galatea, the Orcus Automaton. Uh, this card on field, when it's pointing to something, it can't be destroyed by battle. And it has an ignition effect where we can target a banished machine monster, shuffle it into our deck, and if we do, we can have the optional effect to set an Orcus spell trap from our deck to our field, which does play around Droll and Lockbird. Um, so, this is just our main way of finding our orchestrated Babel, and we kind of need it to resolve on turn one. 
We are on one Long Gear Sue, the Orchest Orchestrator. This guy is basically similar to Galatea, where you can, if he's pointed to something, he's indestructible by card effects. You can shuffle two things back from your banishment into your deck in order to send a card that is linked to the graveyard. Linked meaning if something is pointing to it or it is pointing to something, it is therefore linked and then can be sent to the graveyard. It is non-targeting, non-destruction removal, just like Dingirsu, and it is just as good as Dingirsu. We are on one Nightmare Unicorn, just as an extra removal spell, but this probably is going to be swapped out for something, because I haven't actually summoned this card like ever. We are on one Access Code Talker. Uh, this card lets us OTK a little bit easier, which is really nice. We are on double Dingirsu, the Orchest of the Evening Star. Two does come up. I think two is the right amount, especially if you're playing such a heavy Orchest list like I am. Um, this card, uh, if it has material on it, it just protects the whole board and replaces destruction by any means, really, by detaching a material. On summon, uh, we can either send a card on field to the graveyard, non-targeting, or attach a machine from banishment to itself as material. We can only summon it once per turn, like in any means but this card is incredibly strong as well as you can cheat this out of our extra deck just by windmill slamming it on a blink monster we control but that's it for our xyz and links we are on double grand guignol the dusk dragon we use cartesia and a lighter or dark which is basically our entire deck on summon he's going to send a level uh, six or higher uh lighter dark monster from our deck or our extra deck to the graveyard uh, Orcus Nightmare is a level 7 dark monster, so it fulfills that requirement. We can also send World Legacy, World Wand, or any of our Bestials, which is also something we can do. And then this guy is also interaction in the graveyard, or field. If your opponent would special summon a monster using a monster effect, we can banish it from our graveyard to special summon a Despia monster from our extra deck, or a Dogmatica from our main deck. And we are playing a target for it because it does come up frequently. So let's go over that target. We are on one Despian Proskinian. This allows us to either banish stuff from our opponent's graveyard that's extra deck related, or we can steal it from their graveyard that's extra deck reliant. And it's a quick effect during the main phase. So really strong effect there. Uh, and this can get rid of your Promethean Princesses. This can steal your SP Little Knights. This card is just incredibly strong and I feel like it does need to be respected. And then lastly, we're on the one Brandon and High Spirits target. Since Brandon and High Spirits does need a bridge target, our Spellcaster bridge is our second Grunguignol, but our machine bridge is going to have to be Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon, because it is a machine. And then tokens, I love tokens. Yippee, yippee, yippee. But that's it for the main and extra. I am just gonna quickly cover my side. However, my side is going to be subject to my own like personal choices. Um, I was expecting a lot of Fiendsmith stuff, so I did kind of make my side to kind of beat that as well as a little bit of Tempai. So in our side, we are all, I'm on one Baldrake, the second Phantasme. I am on triple DD Crow in the side. I think this card is very strong. Same with Skullmeister, I'm on double Skullmeister. And I am also on triple Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Triple evenly matched and double twin twister but that's going to be about it for the deck profile thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all later bye bye thank you guys so much for watching the video if you wanted to talk to more Yu-Gi-Oh players like yourself i would highly recommend checking out our discord server link is going to be in the description as well as the qr code on screen we do talk somewhat frequently about Yu-Gi-Oh and the current meta so i would really enjoy to see you there as well as we do recently now have channel memberships available on our YouTube channel where we have three different tiers. We have Super Supporter at $2 a month where you get loyalty badges, emojis, guaranteed comment responses, a shout out at the end of every video, as well as access to the members only Discord channel where you get early sneak peeks at future videos. There is the Giga Supporter at $5 a month where you have early access to all new videos about a day or two before they go up as well as all the previous offers. 
And for $15 a month, we do have our final tier, which is gonna be Femboy Fanatic. You get a guaranteed customized video every single month, as well as one hour of my time, could be for anything you'd like. You want a duel? Absolutely. You want me to help build the deck? Absolutely. You want to play some Hell Divers? Sure. I'll do anything for an hour once a month. But supporting does help me out quite a lot, and it does help me produce all of these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll be seeing y'all later. Bye-bye.